Hey, continuing on with our uh, lesson on simple REST using ASP.NET. Uh, this time what we're going to be doing is adding a model to start with. So if we go to the models folder here in our project, right click and select add new class. And we are going to call this the person class. Just say person there. That'll create our class for us. And then in here, what we're going to do is create a few properties. So the first one we'll do is the uh, is an ID. So a, a tip for adding properties to a class in Visual Studio and C Sharp is to type PROP for property and hit tab twice. Fill in the type and then fill in the name. And uh, this version of C Sharp does not require any other coding for you to do, so you don't have to um, put create a private member and do getters and setters for all of it. All right, and we'll we'll go ahead and continue on. I'm just going to copy and paste some other properties. So uh, we're going to have a last name, which will be a string. Type that in real quick. And then uh, first name. And a pay rate. This will be a really simple little uh, HR database that matches up with our model or our controller that we built last time. And then we will add <coughs> two dates. We're going to make these uh, .NET date time objects. C Sharp and ASP.NET make it really easy to convert uh, date times into JSON, which is what we're going to be using. So we'll just go ahead and add these in. And, and, date. and that's it for our class. That's it. Now, this class doesn't do anything as far as trying to save to a database or anything like that. It's simply a, a class with some properties. We don't have any methods on this. Uh, we won't worry about that right now. We're just simply trying to create the model that we're going to use. So uh, continuing on, what we want to do is change the post in our controller to use this model. So we're going to do using up here first. A simple rest server dot and we want to pull in the models and then down here on our post instead of posting a string we're going to post a person okay and when we get do a get we're also going to do a get on a person so let's just create An instance of person. Now we're going to fix this all up to work against the database, but right now we're just going to, anytime a gets called, we're going to just make up and uh, create an instance of our person class. We'll set the ID to whatever was passed in. Uh, last name equals Smith. Sam and we gotta give him a pay rate. And let's set the start date. We'll just make up a date. So we'll use the date time parse method to do that, and we're gonna set this to five five nineteen ninety. And we'll make the end date later. We're not including a time component. It will include a default time component, but we won't worry about exactly what that is right now. So, so 
let's say they left us a few years later. And instead of returning a string now, we need to return the person object that we just created. Now remember, this will be create this will be changed to be a uh, coming from the database. But right now, we're just testing out our model to make sure that it works. Okay. And so what we're going to do is go ahead and run this. And we'll switch over to our web client. Let's just make sure this gets done building. It should start up the browser here. <coughs> Assuming we don't have any errors. So our browser window started, and now we can go ahead and let's do a get asking for person one. Let's send that. So you'll notice here's all the information. It comes back in the body as JSON. And now let's do a post, but before we do that, we're going to set a breakpoint right here. And this is so we can actually see what this is doing. So let's look at our, let's change this to our post. And what we're going to have to do then is we're going to have to send in some JSON. So this would be whatever you wanted the first name to be. Um, I'm not passing an ID in this case. We'll look at what that is. And then I've got a start date and end date formatted a certain way here. Um, so now let's go ahead and uh, let's post. And if we switch to the debugger, we stopped here. Now let's examine this value that came through. Well, sure enough, it's all populated with everything. Now, I didn't pass the ID in, but uh, everything else worked the way it was supposed to. Now, we were not going to pass an ID in, but we're, we're going to let that be automatically created by the database. So there's a simple way, to, what we did, again, just for review, is we added this person class under models. Then in the person controller, we changed the get to return a person, and we made up our person object. So anytime you call get with any ID, it's always going to return the same person object here. Just the ID will be different. And then we changed post to take a person, and we saw how we can uh, embed in the actual body of the request. We put in uh, what we wanted to get loaded into the object. Now we can take that object on a post and, and write it to the database. And when we do a get, we'll go and look up the, the person by their ID and pull that ID back. So hopefully this was useful and uh, we'll be ready to move on and start hooking up the database in our next session.